Welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you've set aside a few minutes to spend with us today. In each episode of this podcast, we'll share some of what we're learning in the work we do with kids and families on a daily basis at Daystar Counseling in Nashville, Tennessee. Our goal is to help you care for the kids in your life with a little more understanding, a little more practical help, and a whole lot of hope. So pull up a chair and join us on this journey from our little yellow house to yours. David, did you know that I had my first Funkin' Party with both boys last week? What did you do? The question is, what did we not do? We did so much, and by the time we got baths and it was time for bed, I wasn't sure I could stay awake long enough to read books. And then I remembered that the Abide app has stories for kids, and they could handle story time for me. I love that the folks at Abide can give weary parents some help at bedtime by handling story time. Yes, we were listening to Jonah, you can run, but you can't hide. And when the reader said, you may fall asleep before I'm done, I thought there was a great chance that might be true for me. (laughs) I remember reading to my kids at bedtime and them having to nudge me because I'd fallen asleep (laughs) mid-sentence. Thank goodness the folks at Abide can keep going if the grown-ups accidentally nod off. Yes, just one of the many great things the Abide app offers. Sleep better and find peace. Download the Abide app today and boost your mental, physical, and spiritual health. Right now, we have a special offer for our listeners when you subscribe. 25% off your first year when you sign up for the premium subscription but only if you text the promo code RBG to number 22433. Don't wait. Download Abide, Sleep, and Pray Meditation today and text our promo code RBG to number 22433. Not the number sign, just 22433 today to get 25% off. Paula Ferris has spent well over two decades in broadcast television, including nine years at ABC News, where she co-anchored Good Morning America Weekend, co-hosted The View, and launched The Journeys of Faith with Paula Ferris. She's reported on everything from politics, news, and entertainment to sports and faith. Her first book, Called Out, shares her story of transitioning out of her career to find her true calling. Now Paula is using her platform to champion others to know their true worth and equip them to be their best selves. We're so excited about this conversation, not only because we share a very dear friend. Yes, we do. But also because just in even getting ourselves set up, you have made us laugh so hard. (laughs) Yes, you have. Unintentionally. (laughs) Well, we feel like you have a lot of wisdom to share with our folks too. So thank you for carving out the time with us. Thank you, Sissy. I'm so grateful to be with the both of you. I've heard so much about you from The Circle. And you mentioned our mutual friend, Jeannie Cunyon, who's a prolific author and a mother of five boys. Pray for her, please. (laughs) But I'm really thrilled to join you guys. And thank you for wearing your Katie Kirk journalist glasses. So you are in the mood. I seem very official today. You do remind me of Miss Couric, I have to say, and that's a compliment. What? Thank you. An incredible that is a huge compliment. compliment. I have never been told that. I love. I've gotten Taya Leone quite a you few times. You have made her day. Her. Yes, David. Sure. I have to figure out who you remind me of. Give me a little bit of time, okay? Okay. Okay. You report back. I'm thinking Brad Pitt ish. <laughs> oh, so. that is exactly where I was hoping you'd land. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Okay, well, speaking of official, I'm going to read this first question because the amount of things that you have done are so crazy impressive that I'm going to have to read it out because I couldn't get them all out just of my own brain. So, Paula, as a journalist and television correspondent, you have worked in some of the most fascinating spaces. You co-anchored Good Morning America, World News Now, and America This Morning. You co-hosted The View and now host your own podcast, which we both love, by the way. Oh, thank you. Having intersected with people all over the globe, what are some common themes you've seen with people that have stayed with you? I think at the end of the day, people just want to be seen and heard, really. I mean, everyone wants to find their mark and 
I think in this world where we're living in a world of comparison, constant comparison, no matter what our life looks like, right? Everyone yes. is looking, they just want to be seen. They want to be heard mm-hmm. because there's so much coming at you and we feel so little, but at the same time, we are so special and we're so fearfully and wonderfully made and there's only one of us, but yeah, everyone wants to be seen. Yes. Love yes. that. I love that reminder. Paula, Sissy mentioned you have this incredible podcast, Faith and Calling, that we love and have interviewed some dear friends of ours. What do you hope folks take away from your podcast? And what have you learned and loved about the experience of interviewing so many different folks? I love to have conversations with people. I wouldn't even call it an interview. An interview feels very formal. I just like to talk with people. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, my nickname was Paula 20 Questions. Could you just imagine (laughs) how annoying I was? Like, why? But why? It was never (laughs) enough. So I finally put it to good use, you know, in becoming a journalist. Mm -hmm. With the podcast, I really like to talk to people from all different backgrounds about what they're called to do and who they're called to be. It's something I'm really passionate. My first book, my only book, although I have another one coming out in March. Yay. It's about calling and finding your calling and how so often we associate our callings with our career, which I unfortunately did. And then when I tapped the brakes at the height of my career in 2018, when I was anchoring GMA, Good Morning America, sorry, Mm -hmm. and co-hosting The View, I didn't know who I was outside of it. And I think we so often think that we have to do one thing for the rest of our lives. And then when that thing changes, we don't know who we are outside of it. So Mm -hmm. with calling, I just want to give people permission to try new things in new seasons. I firmly believe that we're called to different things in different seasons. We have to first give ourselves permission to try something new. Mm -hmm. So that's really what I hope people, I hope they're encouraged. I hope they laugh. I hope they learn. But yeah, just giving yourself permission to try new things and new season and knowing at the end of the day that you are so much more than what you do, that what you do is not your identity. Mm. I love that. And we sure have experienced all those things listening to you. I love that you were Paula 20 questions because (laughs) I think so much about how God uses all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that Madeline Lingle quote about we are every age we've ever been and those people that we were stay inside of us. And it's all part of what God uses to form our calling and who we continue to be. So totally grateful that's who you were because it's so much of how he uses you today. Oh yeah. I know a a little bit, albeit annoying. (laughs) No. Like I said, I put it to good use. And that's, I think the other thing too, is God uses our unique talents and gifts that he's given us. You know, for me, I've just always been curious and I like Mm. to ask questions and I love to challenge people too. And I like to champion people. So it worked well in broadcasting, but I use that in every area of life too. So like mm. focus on how God uniquely created you, your unique talents and gifts. Everyone has unique talents and gifts. Yes. And you're bringing those to motherhood too. You have three kids. <laughs> We'd love to hear about your family mm. and something you feel like parenting has uniquely taught you. I feel like I'm a better person because I'm a parent. I'm more empathetic. I'm more efficient. I can get so much done in five minutes, you guys. I can like take a shower and have dinner on the table in five minutes. (laughs) That is impressive. I'm so much more efficient. But I think what it's just taught me is to give myself grace, Mm. a lot of grace, because I expected perfectionism for so long. And I just realized like, I can't carry it all and I can't do it all. And I have to give myself grace. But my children are just the loves of my life. (laughs) I love them. I don't always like them. And I'm like, we don't always have to like each other, right? But I love my kids. They are 15, 13, and eight. So I have a ninth grade daughter. So she just started high school. And then I have a seventh grade son. He's 13. And then I have a third grader, Landon, who is eight years old. Mm. We're in that whole three drop-offs and three separate pickup situation, which is going to be like that from here on out. Yes. But my kids are great. Mm. I love this new season. People have asked, when are you going to get back in television? And I'm like, A, why do I have to? Like, again, Mm. I don't have to do one thing for the rest of my life. I love our life. I love we're living a quiet life in South Carolina. We moved from New York City. And just being able to be present with my children to still pursue my passions. And I hate that word balance. I don't think you ever really feel balanced. But I do feel like... Mm. 
I am able to be really present as a mother now that they're older. I didn't realize how much they were going to need me Mm -hmm. when they were older. I thought, you know, I want to be there when they're babies, but they need me more so now. I think more emotionally and mentally, right? Yes. Not so much physically, except for I am their chauffeur. So physically, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Parenthood is just like a lifelong journey of learning, Mm -hmm. right? Of learning and loving. Mm. David, it's almost time for Christmas. I am so excited. All of my kids at home together in one place. I cannot wait. What are you most excited for this Christmas? Well, you can guess. Christmas with little ones is always so much fun. I love experiencing Christmas through the eyes of Henry and Witt. I do miss those days. Okay, what gifts are you getting those sweet boys this year? Well, I'm still trying to figure that out, thinking a lot of construction tools. But speaking of gifts, I've been telling so many people that the Explorer Bible for Kids is the perfect Jesus-centered Christmas gift. It really is. When kids are ready for their first full-text Bible, and even before they are officially ready, because let's be honest, even younger kids will love all the pictures and charts and other visuals in this Bible— The Explorer Bible makes an incredible and meaningful Christmas gift. I think I may have to get one for Henry and Witt this year. Even though they're little, it makes a wonderful family Bible kids can grow into. What a great idea. With the clear language of the Christian Standard Bible translation and engaging full-color designs, kids of all ages can explore this Bible. I think I may get them the adorable leather one with the rocket ship on it. It's super cute. Our special listener promo code works with all editions of the Explorer Bible for Kids. Use code RBG to get 50% off any Explorer Bible at LifeWay.com. Paula, in this season of our podcast, we are focusing on raising emotionally strong and worry-free kids and would love to ask you, what is a favorite memory or story from growing up that shaped you into who you are? So two distinct memories. One is one of our dear friends, the Bartels, used to come over every weekend. And again, Paula, 20 questions. I would go through everything in her purse, (laughs) including things that she probably shouldn't have had in her purse, and challenged her on why she had said things in her purse that shouldn't have been in her purse. I think she just kind of fostered my curiosity and allowed me to be that inherent challenger. Mm. And I give her a lot of credit for guiding me into this curious question asking challenger and champion that I am today. The other memory, very distinct, is I love Michigan football. I was born and raised about 20 minutes from the University of Michigan. My dad went to Michigan. My whole family went to Michigan. Some of my favorite memories that have shaped me to who I am are tailgating at the games on Saturdays and also watching the games with my dad. So this was like something that just my dad and I did together. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest of four. I've always been obsessed with Michigan football. To this day, my kids are not allowed to watch a Michigan football game with me (laughs) because I turn into a not the best version of myself, okay? (laughs) So boundaries, right? (laughs) But it's something that's always been near and dear to me, so much so that when my dad passed away a couple of years ago, he was in hospice, and I wanted to do one last special thing with him and take him to a Michigan game Mm -hmm. because that was always our thing. Even when I graduated from high school and college, I'd still go back to Michigan, and we'd find a time to go to a game together. So made the arrangements to get him out of hospice, you know, and have the special transportation. And we went to a game and it was one of the more memorable, like probably the most memorable thing that I did with my dad because it all came full circle. And for us, it was so much more than a sport. It was something that really bonded the two of us together and something that, Mm. you know, my sisters didn't share that bond with my father and my brother didn't share that bond. I think we each have unique bonds with our parents and for my dad and I, it was always Michigan football. Mm. It was our thing. Oh, I love hearing it's that beautiful. story. Yes, yes. Well, to think about your kids and this journey, hopefully we're all on, of becoming more emotionally strong and worry-free, <laughs> what would you say has helped them move towards that? I find it ironic that you're talking to me about having emotionally strong and worry-free kids because my youngest has an anxiety disorder. Mm. I'm parenting without a playbook, but my playbook is asking other parents who've gone before me, okay, 
help me with this? What is your best advice to? I think one of the best bits of advice that I've had is to be quick to apologize. As parents, we think that we have to present that we have it all together. And I want to show my children that I am a flawed human being and I need forgiveness and I make mistakes and it's okay. But you have to offer that apology. So I'm like, we have to be quick to say, I'm sorry. And then even quicker to say, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. So we're that family where we own our flaws and we acknowledge them. And then we are quick to forgive one another of our flaws. I just want my kids to know they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to have it all together that I don't care what they do for a living. I care about the character and kindness. It's so crazy. Your kids can come from the same parents and the same home, and they can be completely different. Yes. My oldest daughter, Caroline, is just an academic, and she is studious, and she's athletic, too. So she's made the varsity volleyball team as a ninth grader. If she's an Enneagram, she's probably a three. She's a high achiever. She's probably going to be valedictorian. You know, she's a Rotary Scholar. Wow. And she gets all kinds of awards. And then my second, I remember on awards day, Caroline got 14 awards and JJ got none. Mm. So how do you acknowledge her hard work without saying That has been my challenge as a parent, having vastly different children Mm. to validate them and to encourage them in their true worth and their true value outside of their accomplishments. Yes, I want to acknowledge my daughter's hard work and look at the fruits of that, but that is not your value at the end of the day. Mm. And for my son, too, who doesn't get the awards and the acknowledgement and the acclaim that my daughter does, I want him to know hard work matters more. I care more about their character who they are, who God has created them uniquely to be, then what they're going to do with their lives, right? Mm. Where they're going to work, what they're going to go to school for. I'm like, who do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to be? Not what do you want to do? So it was a very long-winded answer. Oh, I love that answer. I do too. Thank you. I do too. Paul, what is one statement you wish someone had said to you as you started the parenting journey? If you think back on the front side of parenting. I wish someone would have told me that you're never going to figure it all out. Mm. I was even just praying this morning, like, Lord, help me to just embrace the journey. I think you feel like at some point you're going to reach this pinnacle and the summit and the mountaintop and have it all together, and you're just not going to. It's a lifelong journey and a lifelong process, and you're always a parent. And again, to give yourself grace, to know that there are going to be days where you disappoint your children to give yourself grace, to keep the glass balls in the air and let the plastic ones fall. You're going to drop balls every single day as a parent. Keep the main thing the main thing. Keep those glass balls in the air and let the plastic ones fall. And tomorrow's a new day and it's a journey. And take your kids along with you, right? Invite them into the process. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I also wish someone would have told me that I'm going to send my kids to therapy for something. (laughs) (laughs) That's so good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. (laughs) That's good. Well, in the realm of therapy, we talk so much as we're processing emotions about also arming ourselves with truth. And so for you as a parent and as a person, what is one truth that you would say helps you worry less? I think I worried more so when I was younger. I'm not an inherently anxious, worrisome person, which is why it's been a little difficult to connect with my youngest who has a generalized anxiety disorder. And he's worried that the nuclear plant around the corner is going to blow up and that we're not going to pick him up from school. Right. And so like he transfers his anxiety onto every single situation and has been diagnosed with Tourette's and ticks. So trying to navigate that. But I think one thing that has really helped me is I say that verse in Philippians, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, but that God acknowledges that we're going to be anxious. Mm. He wouldn't acknowledge it if it wasn't going to be present in our life. One verse that has really been, for me, like a champion of truth in these times, especially the last five years in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart for I've overcome the world. And we were never promised a pain-free, painless, peaceful life. If anything, we are promised the opposite. We will have trouble, but we can take heart because Mm. that final move on the chessboard is God's. Mm. So what good is it going to do for me to worry about it? Is worrying about the situation going to change it? And if not, then I'm not going to allow myself to worry about it because the only thing that that's doing is 
tearing me apart. And I can know at the end of the day, without a shadow of a doubt, that it's all going to work out no matter what it feels like in the moment. That final move on the chessboard belongs to God and he has the victory. So no matter what's Mm. going on around me and the circumstances, I can keep my eyes fixed on Jesus and tap into the perfect peace and know that despite my circumstances, God's got the final move. Mm. I love that. Me too. Sissy, are you excited about The Chosen Season 3? I am. I love that this new season starts out with Jesus' teachings in the Sermon on the Mount. It's one of my favorites. Me too. You know, even though many of us are already familiar with the life of Jesus, The Chosen is such a great way to experience it in a brand new way. Yes. There's just something about seeing the turmoil and tension unfold right before your eyes. It really makes the story come alive. And it really makes it unforgettable. Everyone can watch The Chosen Season 3 for free by downloading The Chosen app. Episodes will start being released before Christmas. Visit thechosentickets.com for more information. That's thechosentickets.com. Okay, Paul, we like to end with something fun. Wait, are we done? a two-part question here. I know, you're so fast. Wait, I I feel like we're... What? What? I thought this was like a 60-minute therapy. I have so many questions to ask you guys. Yeah. We'll do part two here soon. (laughs) When do I get to tap into your knowledge and wisdom? As soon as we get you in Nashville. That's when that's going to happen. We're working so hard to get you and Jeannie in the city at the same time. (laughs) Oh, that would be so fun. We're not going to throw in the towel on that. I don't think we could be in the same city. It wouldn't be prepared for us. (laughs) (laughs) It would combust. It would combust. Yeah. Let's start with a visit. You're both here for a visit at the same time. I can do that. Mm-hmm. All right, and we're going to take you for some great food when that happens. Love and this it. This is a food-related question. Okay. So part one is queso or guac, and then part two is what's your favorite taco? Queso, then guac, or both. Oh, yes. So guacamole. <laughs> Wait, no, not guacamole. Am I pronouncing? <laughs> that is brilliant. That is brilliant. Guaca meso, guaca queso. <laughs> Okay, I, mix I want it all a pillow together. that says that in my house. Yes, yes. I love that. Yes, okay. Um, can I say a margarita too with it? Yes, yes you can. <laughs> all right. And we all will right. join you for that. Yes. What was the second question? All I can think about is queso. Your favorite kind of taco. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite kind of taco. Um, beef taco, like the Taco mm. Bell type of beef, okay? A wow. beef taco, corn shell, yes. shredded lettuce, some tomatoes, and sour cream. Hard or soft corn shell? Oh, Crunchy. Crunchy. Okay. I love my crunchy girl. I like crunchy yeah. everything. Okay. Especially potato chips and Cheetos <laughs> and <laughs> all the things that aren't good for a 47 year old woman, I've found out. So, mm-hmm. oh, Paula, it just is delightful to get to oh, talk to you. Is. It you too. Are is. we really finished? I feel like we just started. I know. We're well, just getting warmed up. up. But you're so fast. I'm super I'm fast. Fun. You're just quick and thoughtful. Yes. She's every bit as fun as our friend Jeannie said. Yep. I'm a, a fire aim ready type of person. So yes. like, I just go for it. And then I'm like, oh, that was a bad <laughs> idea. But that's just how I roll. Like I get in the car, I start moving, and then I adjust my mirrors. So yeah, I am fast. Now you mentioned the Enneagram. What number are you on the Enneagram? I'm an eight. You are. Yes, I'm an eight. But... I think it took me a while. And, you know, they say you can't change. I don't think you change types, but I think you can grow into your type based on, Mm. and this is a whole nother topic of discussion, but, you know, growing up in a very conservative Christian home where Mm. I felt like, you know, my parents were like, you're a little much, Paula, just back up a little bit, you know, like Mm. be a little bit more ladylike, you know, (laughs) quiet. I feel like I wasn't able to really grow into my healthy eightness. And Mm. I love like the thing that gets me most excited is to help my friends succeed and to champion people Mm. to become the best version of themselves. Now, I have to be careful that I don't push people to the edge and then push them off because I want it so bad for them, you know? So I've had to realize, and that's one thing I find helpful. And I know a lot of therapists don't like the Enneagram, but I think for me, it's the one 
psychological tool that has really helped me because I become more self-aware of how I can come across to people. But I'm an eight. Mm. But I also say like, if I'm a three-wheeler, two of my wheels are an eight, but my third wheel is a three and my spare tire is a one. (laughs) So I have a lot of like accomplishment, achiever, a little bit of, you know, paralysis by analysis, perfectionism going on, which I think I really felt like I was a one growing up. Mm. I wouldn't go for things. I wouldn't attempt any thing because I'm like, if I can't be perfect at it, then I'm not going to try. And so I wouldn't try things Mm. instead of just allowing myself to fail forward. And, you know, anyway, yes, that's a whole nother discussion. I'll sit on your couch and have some tissues nearby for that conversation. Okay. We would love love that that. one. Mm -hmm. But I think even in what we're talking about, about God using all of it and who Mm -hmm. he's forming us to be, the fact that that was obviously a painful place growing up for you and that you are now obviously so intentionally giving your kids room to be who they are Mm -hmm. and wanting to champion that even as you're celebrating them and what you were talking about a few minutes ago. So so grateful. Yeah, they're good kids and I'm not going to be perfect. And I tell them all, 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 you know, and even yesterday, I mean, I screwed something up royally. It was a total mom fail. And I just told my daughter, I'm like, I'm I'm sorry I let you down. And, you know, will you forgive me? Yeah, it's fine, mom. Don't worry about it. Yes. As hard as it is, sometimes we think we have to be the strong towers of strength. I think the greatest gift we can give our children is the power of apology and forgiveness mm. and being so quick to say, I'm sorry, and even quicker to say, I forgive you, to not hold grudges, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Well, and as much pressure as kids face today, that feels especially so freeing. So, totally. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hate to ask the last official question then. Okay. But- Will you just tell folks how they can find your podcast, where they can find you? Tell them a little bit about your book, too, and the process, a little more about it, all the things. Okay, so you can keep up with me on Instagram. I don't understand TikTok or Snapchat, so don't try to find me there. I may have a fake account, but that's not me. (laughs) But it's at Paula Ferris on Instagram. I love to connect with people. That's where you can find me. I'm writing a new book. It's pretty much Tell finished. Us about that. Yes, I can show you the cover. It, <gasps> it's called You Don't Have to Carry It All. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Ditch the mom guilt and find a better way forward. Oh. You know, we talk about giving ourselves permission to try new things. And I really felt like God put it on my heart years ago to just champion mothers and families, especially mothers in the workplace. Okay. The reality is the majority of mothers have to work these days. We don't have the option to stay home. And to make the workplace a friendly environment that celebrates motherhood Mm -hmm. instead of scrutinizes it. So I formed Carrie Media earlier this year. Carrie means we want to help carry your burdens, right? And it's, you know, biblical, but our slogan is being a working mom should work. Mm -hmm. And we hope to enact change for working moms by storytelling. That's the media aspect. So I love that. Yeah. We have a weekly newsletter called The Carry All. It's a weekly newsletter for and by working moms that just lightens their load, gives them a laugh, puts a sword in their hand, keeps them in the know. And it's just been a really great place to beat the drum for working moms. So that's my passion. The podcast, yes, about my podcast. Yeah, I do a podcast, Paula Ferris podcast or Faith and Calling podcast, where I talk to people about what they're called to do and who they're called to be. And Carrie Media was really born out of my own story of calling, you know, being called out of Mm. broadcasting and trying this new entrepreneurial space of founding a company, which is terrifying and keeps me up at night and gives me night sweats. But (laughs) yes, sometimes God calls us to things that are uncomfortable, but embrace the discomfort and the fear along with the peace that you're supposed to go for it. So that's where I am. It's just been so great. I love it. Well, thank you for all the good you're putting out into the world in so many places, because there is so much in so many different lanes, Paula. You were helping so many people. Oh, well, I just feel like to him who much is given, much is expected. And it's really how God wired me. I really love to champion people. I do. Mm. Apologies if I push you off the edge while I'm (laughs) trying to help you. Can't help myself sometimes, but it's just how I'm wired. It's how God made me. Mm. Well, we're grateful for you to join us in this conversation and let us be a part of it. Thank you, Katie Kirk. You did a great job. (laughs) Thank you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm going to walk a little taller all day. You should. should. (laughs) Thank Thank you you, for giving us your time. Thank you for inviting me on. It's really been an honor. It's our joy to bring the experience and insight we gain through our work beyond the walls of the Daystar House. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the follow button in your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. 
To learn more about our parenting resources or to see if we're coming to a city near you, visit our website at RaisingBoysAndGirls.com. Join us next time for more help and hope as you continue your journey of raising boys and girls.